one of those days that I feel as though I am winning in the orchid hobby. Thank you for being here. I hope that you will enjoy this video, see some results and some updates, especially with my suspended potting up method, as in the orchid suspended above the media to encourage the roots to grow into the lecker before filling it up. On the 28th of July, oh, hi. <laughs> You see, because one gets excited, one gets carried away and all the formalities out the window and I have to actually bottle this enthusiasm because that would enter with being overconfident and then complacency kicks in and mistakes happen and suddenly the whole winning at the orchid hobby theme is out the window. So regroup. Hi, thank you for being here. Really appreciate your time. Back to the 28th of July, I potted up my Catlia bicolor variety brasiliensis in my suspended potting up method. The orchid is way above the media and there were signs of roots coming out of the base and the old roots were still greening up nicely, but it was time to get her in a pot to encourage those roots to grow without any further woman handling and let the tips get into that media of their own and then fill her up. That was the 28th of July. I can tell you, ta-da! Look at all those roots that went in. And they went in during the hottest and most driest months of my year. So granted, August was an exception. I had some great humidity to help me out. But I've done this in past years and the high humidity climate right here with all the lecker that I just kept wet encouraged the roots to go down in the past years. And well, here today I can finally film and prove it works. So all we have to do for this little stint and round is just to fill up with small lecker and cover the roots that grew into the pot that were nothing but mere nubbins when we potted them up in this suspended potting up method. That is Catlia Atro Walker, two pieces. Same here, we still got another root coming, but I'm ready to cover that up. And we can also do the same thing with my Brassavola Cordata here. Those roots are now safe and secure in the media and I can fill her up. Fantastic. This is the fun part take the lecker and pour it into the pot. A little bit for the cordata. A little bit for the atra walker. You can bloom now, you know. You're all established, you're all set up. You can bloom. I don't know what you're waiting for. There we go. And for your 2.0 here as well. Amazing. But wait, there's more. I'm going to now get my Lelia Papstii and I'm going to update you on two other candidates, the Cardimii and Brigieri, which arrived in May. And well, let's have a look at them and see what we can do about those. So this is Lelia Brigieri. This arrived in May of this year, 2021. And it has been babied over through the entire time by keeping it damp, letting it dry, keeping it damp, letting it dry. <laughs> hey, you get the point. It had matured this growth during that time period, which has a sheath. I don't know if it wants to bloom. It feels chubby. Would I let it bloom? Ah, oh, but you see there are no roots, so I don't know if it's even going to bother blooming because it's working on this growth right here. This is new. <laughs> it's working on this growth. It's also working on this growth. And it is just starting somewhere <laughs> down here, another new growth. So we've got a lot of, lot of potential here, but I'm waiting for root nubbins. So this one's not going into a pot just yet. I am so glad she's holding on though, and she is vigorous and that gives me hope. I have viable roots that I am keeping hydrated and let dry out and then, you know, back and forth. But uh, it is easier for me to maintain this orchid 
outside of a pot at this current stage as opposed to potting it up and getting ahead of myself because I can let her dry out and I need to see root tips coming somewhere. And there's another new growth. Oh my goodness, this orchid, well, well. One day we will see root nubbins. Let me show you Cardimii. We need to keep our fingers crossed for this little one. I'm holding her upside down for reasons. <laughs> First of all, I'm not interfering with this growth right here that's been maturing since May. It is great to see that the growths are in the right direction for potting up. They were sticking out in that direction when they arrived. So they've matured, but I have lost some leaves and I have to be very careful because there is another new growth coming somewhere right here. And if these guys don't produce roots, then this one is going to have to, right there. <laughs> we need a magnifying glass here. <laughs> but yeah, so Cardimii, eh, not ready to go in either. She is now in a little bit of a bowl setup where there's a lot of humidity around the leaves. I don't want to put her in a dome. That would be too much this time of year but I'm encouraging the growths to not lose any dehydration through the leaves um, <laughs> and just hoping to get a root nubbin or two and then we can pot this one up. So fingers crossed, these two newcomers from May. Ooh, it's been quite the summer with them. Pops DI newcomer from September. Yeah, also same principle. Keep it in some water, let it dry out, keep it in water, etc. Look, this little growth, shame, had a snapped leaf and it is still going to produce roots. That's all I can ask of it. So even though it is broken, it is still attached to the main part of the plant. I would like to keep it that way. There's a little growth in the back here that one. <laughs> Ta -da. So that's not been that long a waiting period. And this one is going to go into its pot today as part of this little quick update and orchid potpourri. Remember the little growth here? Yeah, I think that stopped growing, but I think it's going to try and do something over here. Everything is tiny, even though this one I would consider a big Rapiculus lelia. So Enough jibber jabber. Get her in a pot. Woohoo! So much fun getting these in the ground. Okay, so as per usual, crocking at the bottom, holes are in the back. Large lecker this time because, again, I don't have enough large lava rock to take me through the others that need to be potted up. I have plenty of large lecker, which I don't have any candidates for in the foreseeable future, and I'm talking 12 to 24 months. So here we go just to save me on the lava rock. Then I'm going to use my classic medium-sized lava rock just to fill in the blanks, get it raised a little bit higher. Let's see if that is good enough. I don't want the orchid to be too high in the pot and run out of space, let's say, air-wise, air space. I'm just making sure where she's going to sit because the next layer is my Akadama and Grit mix which I am also going to be using up prior to opening my new bag of Ceramis, which probably won't be needed for this lot of Lelias at this point in time. This Akadama has been washed and you can still see how dusty it gets, but that's okay. It's gonna be an okay climate in the pot because the grit is going to balance all of that out. My tag, in before the orchid. No more jiggling once the orchid is in place. Is that enough or should I finish that tub? I can finish the tub and spread it around a little bit more in the corners. Let's do that. Let's not rush this gorgeous process of getting a Lelia into her pot. She is going into the middle. So I've got this direction of growth. I've got this direction of growth. I'm putting her diagonal like that to have the space of the corners. 
to work for me in the future. Besides, she is still in the middle, so she can go anywhere she wants. And then because I've got roots coming on this side and that side, I'm gonna make a little bit of a hollow. Nestle her into that hollow. And pour Akadama more towards where the roots are gonna come out. Keep them nice and moist. Sorry if that word is not to your liking. Wet is not good, damp. Maybe we should use the word damp. I know that some people are not too pleased about the word moist. And then we're going to fill around with lava rock. Let's get her stable. Let's use lava rock as our third hand. That's one. Haha! <laughs> Hands free. Okay, careful, careful, careful. Like I said, I feel like I'm winning in the orchid hobby today and that could be dangerous. One little mistake and that feeling is gonna go and you're gonna wonder, why did I do that? Like I always say, complacency and orchids, they don't go hand in hand. So she is quite stable in the pot. I think I could actually leave her like this. Yeah, I don't need to prop her up with large lava rock. Cool. Otherwise, I would have taken large lava rock and propped her up on her other structures. But no, she's looking pretty good like this. Now, one thing I do want to make sure of, though, is that these little roots down here, let me zoom in. Let me get you in a little bit closer. These little roots are coming and they are already too close to the lava rock for my liking. So we've just done the result of the potting, the suspended potting up method. That is the similar concept I want to achieve here. So we're taking out all the lava rock around those roots and we're gonna be able to watch them grow into the pot. Whether it is a cattleya, a phalaenopsis, or in this case, a little Rapiculus lelia, the same principle applies. And now I want to make sure that my holes are not going to be pointing in the direction of any orchids that are underneath this shelf. It's a busy area, it's a busy area. It's also a very popular area for the orchids because it's a breezeway, it's nice and breezy. I can still be quite aggressive with my watering. However, they will dry out very quickly. And what do I see here? Yeah, we're gonna deal with that right now. That is a mealybug. Paintbrush doused in garlic alcohol. You are history. Don't want you on my orchids. Right. And now we're going to flush through and I'm going to let that alcohol evaporate right here in the breezeway. What I want to see is the color of the water coming out. See, it's kind of brown and that is the dust from the Akadama. So we'll get another one until it runs clear. Whoa, there we go. We're going to keep doing this until that water runs clear. It's looking much better. This is just plain RO water. From here on in, it'll just be water, light, and airflow <laughs> until those roots are long enough. This is exciting. I don't know about you. I just hope that you enjoyed this video. For me, it's nice to see that every orchid gets into a pot. I can reference the video back. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to tell you about the Cattleya bicolor having been taken care of and suspended for the potting up method to let the roots grow into the pot on the 28th of July. I must say that the channel is a great database and I'm absolutely loving going back to videos and referencing what I did in the past. So here we are, Lelia Popstii in her pot, ready to rumble, ready to root. Happy days. Now I hope the other two compadres will follow suit so that I can close this year off with the Floralia order, at least potted up. 
If you're still here, quick update. The orchids I'm still missing from Floralia since February, that was when I ordered all of these orchids that even came late. The first two, the rubescence and the fistery, they are not coming, unfortunately. They told me they don't have any more. I am gutted. I am so gutted, I can't tell you. But anyway, they told me they would refund me. I am still waiting for that refund. But yeah, I have to find me robescence and fistery elsewhere. Oh well, c'est la vie, c'est la vie. Thank you so much for also making my day. Apart from being able just to pot up orchids that are getting roots. <laughs> Thank you for making me feel like I'm winning today just by watching this video. I appreciate your support. I appreciate the fact that you subscribe, that you like the video. I appreciate all of that so very, very much. And I wish you a beautiful, beautiful day on one condition, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.